Hi, this is Julie Lerman, author of Programming Entity Framework, with a fourth in a series of beginning Entity Framework tutorials I've created for Visual Studio 2010. You can find more of these videos at www.pluralsight.com. This video will focus on consuming a model from a separate project. It's a best practice to create your entity data model in its own project, and there are a few steps you need to be aware of when you want to use that model from another project. All of the upcoming videos in this series will follow this pattern, so rather than walk through the steps each time, you can learn them here and leverage them going forward. So let's get started. I'll use the model that I created in the first video in this series. It's based on the AdventureWorks LT database, which is one of Microsoft's sample databases. So I created this model in its own assembly. I created it in a class library. And the reason for that is so that I can easily reuse this model from various projects and different applications. So what we'll do here is, using this model, we'll create a consuming application, just a little console application for this demo, and show how to ensure that we can use this model from the other project. There's a few things I want to show you about the model and this project before we go forward. Now we've worked mostly with the designer. I think in a few of the previous videos I showed you the metadata behind the designer. So the model is actually just XML and the designer is a way of interacting with that in a simpler way than the XML. Let's take a quick look at the XML. And I'll open it up in the XML, open the model up in the XML editor. Now, as I do that, you can't have the model open both as XML and in the designer view at the same time. So when I try to do this, it will force me to close the model that's in the designer. And if there were any edits to it, it would also prompt me to make changes, to save those changes. So the XML is two sections of XML. One is the model all of the metadata for the model, and the other is a chunk of XML that's just about the positioning of things in the designer, so we don't really pay any attention to that one. So let me close that back up. Now, when we're looking at the model in the designer, we're only seeing one piece of the metadata. We're seeing the, the conceptual model, and that's the one that's most important to us. That's the one that you'll interact with as you work with your applications, but there's more that happens in the background. So the metadata is actually three sections of information. One of those is that conceptual model. So here's the XML description of everything that we've got on that designer surface in that IDE. So there's the entire container. Here are all of the entity sets and um, association sets for the associations between those entities. I'll collapse the entity container. Then below that, we have the XML that describes each of the entity types. And below these, have a bunch of entities there. All the associations, those are the relationships between the entities, along with their constraints. So all of that's described in the XML. And when we're working with that in, an, in Visual Studio, we get that all self-contained in one file, which is the EDMX file. So the EDMX file has the XML metadata and it has all of that designer positioning information. Now when we build the project, what happens is that we get three separate files. If we take a look at in the connection string in the app config, this connection string, the first part of it is the metadata. The metadata says where will we find the metadata, just as a pointer to the metadata. So you'll see that there's three pieces here. One is CSDL, the next is the SSDL, and the final is the MSL. What happens is, as you build the application or the, the, this project, those three sets of metadata are extracted and set into their own separate files. Now by default, those files are built into the assembly, in, right into the DLL, as resources. But you can also change that so that they're spit out as separate files in the file path. As a matter of fact, that's a property setting. 
It's called metadata artifact processing. So by default, it embeds in the output assembly. You can also say to copy the separate files to the output directory. Then you would get physically three separate files, but normally you won't see them. And that shortcut information in the metadata string, this information here, indicates to whoever's reading it, when I say whoever, I mean whatever application is reading it, that the file can be found as a resource inside of an assembly that is in the application. So that all happens automatically. You won't have to worry about it. But this is really important information. And it, now that you've seen that, it will make more sense as we create the new project that will consume this model. So let's go ahead and add a new console application to this, uh, to this solution. So now, in order to use the model, there are three things we need to do. The first is we'll make a reference to this project up here. And the reason for that is so that we can have access to the compiled classes inside the project. So I'll add a reference. And there's the project name. So we've got that. The next thing I want is I need this program to have the ability to find the model. Okay, so to have the ability to not only to get this information, which is where's the metadata, but also it will, since it's the executing application, it needs access to the database connection as well. So what you would normally do if you already had a config file in here, whether it was an app config or a web config, you could just copy this connection string into there. I don't even have an app config here, so I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to copy the whole file and paste it. So that was step two. Step one was a reference to the assembly. Step two is the connection string. Now, the consuming, the consuming application, or the executable in this case, will be interacting with the Entity Framework. So it needs a reference to the Entity Framework API. When we created the model in here, the EDM designer automatically added the reference to system.data.entity. But this project now needs that reference because it's going to be running the show. So if I go over to recent, I will find it because I use that quite often. So those are the three important pieces we need in order to be able to consume the model. So the executing application, and you may have a layered solution, right? So the executing application definitely needs to have the connection string. But it's the project or the assembly that directly consumes the model, which needs the reference to the model project so it can have access to the classes. And it also needs to have the system.data.entity reference in it. So with that, we'll be able to go forward and create applications with our model. And you'll be doing plenty of that in future videos in this series. So again, I'm Julie Lerman, and thanks for watching this training video on consuming an entity data model from a separate project.